Having defined fully connected neural networks and graph neural networks, we are ready to compare them. Graph neural networks and fully connected neural networks have very similar architectures. They both use layers, which are composed of linear transformations and pointwise nonlinearities. The difference is that arbitrary neural networks utilize arbitrary linear transformations, whereas graph neural networks rely on graph filters. An important question is which of these two architectures we expect to work better? The first important point to make is that the GNN is a particular case of a fully connected neural network, where we impose a particular structure on the linear map. A consequence of this fact is that if we compare the best possible cost that is attainable by a fully connected neural network with the best possible cost that is attainable by a GNN, the cost attainable by the neural network is smaller. This is because the optimization set of the neural network includes the optimization set of the GNN. Whatever transformation can be implemented with a GNN is a particular case of a transformation that can be implemented with an FCNN. This seems to indicate that the fully connected neural network does better, but this reduction in cost holds for the training set which does not necessarily translate to the operation of the neural network. In practice, the GNN does better during operation because it generalizes better to signals or to examples that have not yet been seen. And in turn, this happens because the GNN successfully exploits internal symmetries of graph signals that are codified by the graph shift operator. This is a somewhat obscure statement, but it is also the reason why we are studying GNNs instead of just relying on fully connected neural networks. We will therefore try to clarify with an example. The diagrams are a cartoon illustration of a recommendation system where the colored nodes represent available ratings. Our objective is to predict the ratings associated with the clear nodes. Suppose that we observe ratings with the structure on the left, but we never get to observe examples like the other two. That is, the signal on the left is observed during training, but the other two examples are observed only during the execution of the neural network. From the examples, like the one in the left, the neural network should be able to infer how to fill the ratings for the signal in the middle. But it is unreasonable that it will learn how to fill the ratings for the signal on the right. There is nothing in this right signal, save for the graph, that can make it learnable from the signal on the left. This is obvious, but if you don't find it obvious, remember that the graph is unknown to the FCNN. All the FCNN knows are the signal indexes, and how is the FCNN going to learn how to fill entry x6 on the right after it has learned to fill entry x3? It's impossible. But who knows the graph? The GNN does, and because it knows the graph, it will succeed at learning how to fill the signal on the right. Indeed, if we learn how to fill the signal on the left using a GNN during training, the GNN will also learn how to fill the signal in the middle, same as the FCNN, but it will also learn how to fill the signal on the right, which the FCNN did not. This is because the local structure of both signals, the one on the left and the one on the right, are identical. This is a property that the filters that make up the layers of the GNN can exploit. The operations that a graph filter performs to predict the value of x6 for the signal on the right are the exact same operations that the graph filter performs to predict the value of x3 for the signal on the left. 
This is what we mean when we say that GNNs exploit signal symmetries. There are symmetries and signals that make seemingly disparate examples equivalent, like it happens for the signals on the right and the left. They are different, but they can be processed in the same manner. The symmetries effectively multiply the size of the dataset. This intuitive idea will be formalized later in the form of the permutation equivariance of GNNs, and it will also connect with stability notions, which is what will allow us to exploit quasi-symmetries as opposed to exploit exact symmetries only. Incidentally, a similar story holds for CNNs, which instead of permutation quasi-equivariance exploit translation quasi-equivariance.